The winds of change are blowing over at DC Entertainment, and Jeff Johns and Jim Lee are right in the middle of it. I'm Stan, and this is Detail Comics. What's up, everybody? This is going to be a weekly one-shot where I'm going to be talking about Jeff Johns, DC Entertainment, and a lot of different things that have been going on. So make sure you subscribe to get more content like this. The one thing that I want to talk about right now is Jeff Johns and his recent departure from DC Entertainment. So it was announced on Monday that Jeff Johns is going to be stepping down from his role as Chief Creative Officer and President or Co-President of DC Entertainment. And this is just a week or two weeks after Diane Nelson stepped down from her Co-President position at DC Entertainment as well. So a lot of people inside Hollywood and the industry are thinking that this is just kind of a mass exodus or firing, a restructuring of the Guard, especially after Walter Hamada took over the movie division of Warner brothers associated with DC Films. So, it's one of those things where we've got to take a look at exactly what's going on, but first let's dive into exactly what Jeff Johns is known for inside the industry. So while he cut his teeth in 2000, co-writing on JSA and then becoming the series regular writer on The Flash, he's also done some fantastic work in other avenues. He helped relaunch the Teen Titans, he wrote Green Lantern Rebirth, he did Infinite Crisis and then helped relaunch Barry Allen as The Flash in The Flash Rebirth. He wrote Blackest Night, which is one of the most important parts of the Green Lantern mythology, introducing us to the rest of the spectrum of the Green Lanterns. And then in 2010, he was promoted to Chief Creative Officer of DC Entertainment, which was to help the expansion of DC characters into other media. So we're talking about video games, we're talking about television, streaming services, movies, all those kind of things. That was his job, was to promote DC characters and help develop other properties into things for other media. And then he also wrote Flashpoint, which helped redefine the entire DC universe for better or worse, because Flashpoint was used as a jumping off point for the New 52, where he also helped relaunch the Justice League, Aquaman, and a few other things as well. This brings us to 2016, when he was promoted to co-president with Diane Nelson, of DC Entertainment, and he started to serve as executive producer on movies like Batman vs. Superman, and he helped to develop the DC CW universe. So he wrote a few episodes for Arrow, helped co-develop the Flash series, and that leads us into the new DC Universe streaming service, where we're going to be seeing Jeff Johns writing and executive producing on Titans the TV show, as well as the Doom Patrol series. He wrote the episode for Doom Patrol inside the Titans show that is going to cause it to spin off into its own 13-part miniseries. Of course, in comics, we still know him as one of the architects behind DC Rebirth, which is one of the single biggest and most successful initiatives inside comics recently in terms of relaunching and restructuring an entire line and giving it one solid focus, which is also keystoned by the other comic book he's writing right now, Doomsday Clock, which is one of the most hotly anticipated titles when it comes out and is dealing with the introduction of the Watchmen into the DC Universe, which is something that's never really happened before. So if we talk about Jeff Johns and his influence on DC Comics as well as DC Entertainment, it has been earth-shattering. Ever since he rose to prominence inside the company, he has had a hand in some of the greatest and largest initiatives inside the company and helped shape it and move it forward in a progressive direction. However, because of the productions of Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, as well as Justice League failing to meet the expectations of the studio, it seems like a lot of people are thinking that headhunters were coming in to kind of clean house and start a brand new direction as far as DC Films goes, and that just happened to include Jeff Johns. However, what we do know is that he left to start his own production company, Mad Ghost Productions, which is going to focus on on development of film and TV properties and to help him serve as an executive producer, writer, and other aspects of the actual film and production. So inside the report from The Hollywood Reporter, we actually see them quote Johns as saying he wanted to step down from his executive position so that that way he could get back into the creative aspects of what he loves doing, which is writing, producing, being on set, and taking care of the projects and shepherding them through the system. Of course, some other people inside the industry might think that this is some sort of golden parachute that DC's giving him so that that way that he can go away quietly and then fade off into existence someplace else. But it seems like he's really happy with the decision, so I wish him the best as far as that's concerned. However, what that leaves us with is a really big gaping hole in the DC structure. So without a president, Jim Lee steps up as chief creative officer and then continues to be publisher with Dan DiDio. No longer co-publishers, they're just publishers of DC Comics. And this is going to kind of change the way that the structure is moving forward. And when we see the increased influence of writers like Scott Snyder on the direction of Justice League, as well as there's a number of properties that are associated with that, the introduction of Brian Michael Bendis, who helped shape a lot of the early Marvel constructs when it came to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as well as the Marvel streaming service, you can see where this thing's kind of going. 
One of the other things that Jeff Johns gets to keep is the Killing Zone, which is actually his own little pop-up label imprint, which he's going to write and curate, similar to what Gerard Way from My Chemical Romance is doing, as well as Brian Michael Bendis when we're talking about his kind of Jinx World original creator series. So inside that whole Killing Zone aspect, we're going to get a lot lesser known characters that he's going to be able to develop and kind of revitalize and rejuvenate for DC as far as properties are concerned. Plus, we're probably going to get his Three Jokers storyline, as well as a Shazam book. These are things that he's been holding on to pretty tightly, and the Legion of Superheroes is definitely a possibility. But that's where we start to get into what we have to talk about, which honestly isn't really much. The only thing that's left is rampant speculation, but rampant speculation's fun, so let's fucking do that shit anyway. So if we're talking about what probably is going to come out of this entire scenario, we're going to see Jeff Johns have a reduced influence on what actually happens or what the roadmap is for DC as a whole. So the Rebirth initiative that he started off is probably going to start to splinter and fracture over time, just as things get a little bit less consistent and possibly work less with the narrative that was started with DC Rebirth. And that's something that you could also see already happening with the influence of Scott Snyder, Brian Michael Bendis, and other creators that are kind of taking large scopes inside the DC Comics universe and moving them in their own direction. DC's Dark Knight's Metal is probably one of the best impressions of that, as well as the relaunch of Superman and Action Comics to kind of fit into the Brian Michael Bendis vision of the system, that is where we're going to kind of move everything out. So this is the return of creative continuity. Everything happens, but it's not going to weigh down the actions of other things. So it's kind of a mumbo jumbo at this point in time. And I've seen some people in the comments say that the only way that DC is going to be able to survive this is some sort of other crisis, which has happened before, so I'm not really super concerned about that, but hopefully they can keep it together with a strong editorial team. And the other thing we might see is a little bit stronger influence from a lot of creators inside the DC Comics world on things like DC Films, DC Streaming, DC Television, say like Scott Snyder or Brian Michael Bendis, who have a considerable amount of influence inside DC Comics, possibly picking up writing and producing credits on these other kind of series as they expand their realm of influence. But there's really not a lot that we can say about this at this point in time. It seems like we're going to see a shift from what we know as DC for the last two years, post New 52, going into DC Rebirth, into what is now this kind of post Jeff Johns realm. He's still going to be on there. He's still going to be, you know, writing his Shazam story. He's probably going to lose control of a few other things. It's just that when you're not the chief executive officer and the president of DC Comics, you can't necessarily hold properties for yourself. So he's probably going to continue to operate on Doomsday Clock. He's probably going to get a Shazam series, but you might see like Legion of Superheroes and some other things that he was holding on to, making their way over to other the creators. But it's really going to be kind of interesting to see how big the shift is going to be from what we know DC to be over the last two years post New 52 to what DC is going to become over the next 12 months as the creators that come on like Brian Michael Bendis and Scott Snyder in a more consulting kind of role for the overall DC universe exercise their influence and possibly move it in a different direction. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I don't necessarily know, but I want to know what you guys think too, so hit me up in the comments down below and we can start that conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.